Thanks for listening. This is Sound Ideas on WGLT. There are truths and then there are poetic truths, ones that illustrate the human condition even if the stories portrayed lack a certain, well, accuracy. Why let facts get in the way of a good story, after all? In today's episode of our ongoing series, McHistory, let's hear about a legendary broadcaster and storyteller in McLean County and elsewhere. I broadcast some of the out-of-town baseball games by reconstruction. They were called ticker games, which meant I would stay in Bloomington and dramatize the game from the studios. This was done by Western Union Ticker. Campbell Stretch Miller, although he only lived a part of his adult life in the Twin Cities in McLean County, the case could be made that indeed he may be the greatest storyteller in McLean County's history. This is Bill Wetzel, member of the McLean County Museum of History Board. This is Bill Kemp, librarian, McLean County Museum of History. For example, the W.U. Man in St. Evansville would send each play by Morse code to my W.U. Man in the studio who would type out the information, hand the sheet to me, and I in turn would describe the action just as though I were there. His nickname, Stretch, comes from his six foot, six inch, 220 pound frame. He finds himself during the height of the Great Depression in the early 1930s playing basketball at Illinois State Normal University. We didn't try to fool the people. We did use recorded crowd sound effects, but it was possible to hear the ticker clicking away in the background. And most listeners knew that it was a recreation. He was never a starter, more of a campus character. He had an interest in the arts and debate. He was an editor at the Vedette, the student newspaper. He had an interest in reporting. What made this particular incident wild was that in the play-by-play, I was always about a half inning behind. He begins to work for WJBC, the Bloomington-based AM radio station. And by 1935, we see Stretch Miller handling the play-by-play duties covering the Bloomington Cardinals in the Illinois-Indiana-Iowa League. The fellow receiving would type up several plays before handing me the sheet. He was expected to not only announce the news and sports, but to handle music shows, to do a man-in-the-street program, to write commercials, and even sell advertisements. I found out later that all season long there had been a local man going into various bars in Bloomington where they had my reconstructed games tuned in. He would sip a beer and engage in conversation with anyone who would listen. WJBC becomes a training ground to a host of play-by-play men, they're all men, that go on to have significant careers in Major League Baseball and in other professional sports. Then he would refer to the game and say things like, I'll bet you the next guy gets a hit. Or two bucks says he'll strike this guy out. Or even, give me odds and I'll bet this batter hits a homer. His career was interrupted somewhat by World War II uh, in service in the US Navy, but he found time to do some radio while in the service. He always seemed to find takers and he nearly always won. He would miss a couple so no one would get too suspicious. After the war, his career includes eight seasons doing Cardinals play-by-play with none other than Harry Carey and Gabby Street, one of the legends in Cardinals Nation. He'd then walk out 10 or $15 ahead and go on to another saloon and repeat the process. Campbell Stretch Miller will retire in Peoria and become a local legend on the banquet circuit, uh, known for his stories, uh, whether based in fact or more legend, we cannot really say. The season was almost over before it was discovered that he was an old Western Union man. He could read Morse code, could hear the ticking in the background at the same time my receiver would be typing it out, well in advance of my description over the air. 
During the 1971 season, the St. Louis Cardinals remembered Stretch Miller with a Stretch Miller Memorial Weekend, and then he will pass away of ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease, in 1972. He won a lot of money before he was discovered, but it's a cinch he didn't go into those bars again. You heard Bill Wetzel and Bill Kemp. McHistory is a partnership between WGLT and the McLean County Museum of History. Charlie Schlenker from WGLT produced this episode. Tomorrow, hear another baseball episode of McHistory, which has a colorful character and colorful language. And thanks for choosing WGLT Sound Ideas, made possible in part by Bloomington Normal Audiology. I'm John Norton, Story Help from WGLT's Charlie Schlenker twice today, and from Lauren Warnicke. Katie Seelinger edits the show. This is 89.1 WGLT and WGLT.org, part of the NPR Network.